Okay, what's going on boys? Norgates here. Welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to go over the customized controller um, settings, all the new controller settings, everything that you want to know. I know some of you guys are new to FIFA as well, because it was free on the PS Store, I think, uh, more last month that just went. And for those of you that are wondering in the update for the controller settings, um, so let's just go st straight through them. I haven't made a video since, but the competitive last master switch, there was before a glitch where you could basically play with jockeying or still unassisted and basically agile dribbling on off and then you can turn it more switch on and it was a visual glitch that meant that that meant that inside the game you still had it there was two different ways of doing it there was two different ways of doing it there was one way you turn it off and one way you turn it on it doesn't make a difference it doesn't exist anymore so if you ever see this competitive mass mass switch glitch it no longer works anymore okay so what this is basically is all the game modes like compare like rivals i believe and foot champions you are forced to leave this one on and that means that contextual agile dribbling will be off contextual agile dribbling is when you hold the r1 button when you're next to your opponent and the game turns agile dribbling on when it's contextual the game works out the proximity of your player and your opponent and sometimes turns on agile dribbling automatically you don't really want that in my opinion you want to be able to control agile dribbling yourself and auto clearances, auto flare pass, auto shots are pretty self-expansionary. The game will do it for you. Like if you open goal, the game will shoot. This is head is the same thing. Now jockeying assist in a manual. I've explained this and I have a video on my Patreon series. Don't forget to spot my Patreon series. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash nil guys. But I've actually got a video on it. I wrote it actually quite a long time ago. But um, don't forget we are starting now. It's a new month. You can sign up for our Patreon series. You don't get better after one month. I'll refund your money. Um, now, I have a Division 10 to Elite Division series where I use uh, the normal jockey, but the main thing I want to, um, is the master switch glitch. Here it is. Hang on, here it is. Yep, the, there's three different jockeying type methods. I've got four videos on the Patreon series. There's L2, the running jockey, the running with the analog sprint. There's different various variations of controlling it. Now, if it's unassisted, basically, the best thing I can say to you is think about this. If you have an attacker and you have a defender, if you move to the right with assisted jockey in the game, will stop you from overshooting past the defender will allow you to stay in line, okay? If you're on manual, the game has no assistance. So basically, the game just stops you from running past your opponent, allows you to stick with him very easier, or he or she. Um, so you can't do that anymore. And tactical defending, legacy defending basically only works um, in kickoff, I believe. I think even online now, it's all tactical defending. So... By default, on most competitive game modes, I believe this is like foot champions, rivals, this master switch will be on by default, okay? Through pass assistance, I'd leave it on semi. I think it, um, on rivals or foot champs, it changed to semi anyway. So it doesn't matter what you put it on, just leave it on semi if I was you. The FIFA trainer, unless you're new to, to FIFA, you don't need to use the FIFA trainer. You could pause the game. And what you can do is that you can pause the game and you could just alter what settings you want on. So you want to show shot elevation, where your pass is going. Probably better, it's probably better in like kickoff or like, you know, these game modes that you're not really going to play. It's quite distracting, to be honest. Now, time finishing now. It's still, excuse me, one second. I need to have a, a sip of water now. Time finishing. It's a very interesting one. In contrary to belief, it's not compulsory, but I would completely advise you to put this on. Finishing this year is probably the worst it's ever been. I mean, 21 had, I mean, 21 is definitely a better game than this year, in my opinion. Um, but, well, it, it's debatable how you want to look at that. But finishing was one of the big things that put, propelled 21 on top. It's because finishing last year was perfect, in my opinion. Finishing is so 50-50, you can honestly have like seven 1v1s, miss every single chance, but your opponent takes a half punt outside the box and he scores. It's very frustrating. With time shooting, when you green time a shot, it does help you guarantee that goal. Now, the key thing is, is to practice this. Go in squad battles, go in amateur game mode, just keep hitting the ball at the goal. Don't do this in kickoff or skill games because it's not really an accurate representation. Go into like squad battles and do it then. You can do it in kickoff actually, to be honest, but squad battles is good. That's why I advise you and recommend you to practice it. Do so not, however, do it in skill game because it's not the best way of practicing it. Now, by default, you just press the shoot button twice. Like you press it once before you place the ball again. You press it again, you get it yellow, green, or red. Green perfect, gray is late, yellow is early, red is too early. Um, so it's up to you if you want to pick this up. If you're not used to this, never used time finishing before, leave on off because people like to spam the shoot button. So for me, it says square. It will be circle for you. I'll explain that why in a second. But... Ignore that saying square. In fact, let me just put that there. 
There you go. And you can see that's why you want to make sure that this is on if you don't have to use it. If you don't have to use it, feel free to turn this off. Now, this one comes down to personal preference. Now, unfortunately, there isn't an idea to, or there isn't a method to change the color of this. Now, I know most people are finding this very distracting, even myself. To have this one on, basically, when you press the L1 button, L1 is your player switch button. The next player switch indicator means that your icon, your player will have like a red mark above their head, okay? And basically, the player that you want to switch to will have like kind of like a burgundy faded color. So I tried to draw this out for you, make it a bit easier for you and as an explanation. So let me just get this color here. Okay, so imagine you're controlling player X. Imagine this is a player Y here, yeah? Now, generally speaking, you will have a red triangle above your head, but there will also be another triangle. I've not really got a burgundy color here, but we're just going to go with this one here. It's kind of dark. Hopefully you can see this. Yeah, so this marker here. If you press the L1 button, you will switch that player guaranteed every single time. So that, uh, that icon is very important because it tells you, press the L1 button, who's the game going to switch to? And that's why it's actually quite effective. So I leave it on. Secondly is the player, so as you said, as I said, player X and player Y, they say player X with the red icon. If you use teammate contain, which for some of you guys would be default, the, the R1 button, or be this one over here, or RB if you're on Xbox. If you use teammate contain, then you'll have like a green curse above the player said. That would be the player that's applying pressure. So what I would advise you is, is that if you are not 100% sure, leave it on on. And then if you don't like it, then turn it off. It's very handy. It's very important inside the box when you're defending because you press the L1 button. No, you're switching to guaranteed. And simple as that. That's my advice in regards to that. So leave one on. And if it really does distract, turn off. But there's only a handful of you guys where it will distract you. Passport assistance. There's no reason to leave this one off. Just leave one on. There is literally no reason you want this one off. Even on a high level, there's no like where the game stops an AI block or something that might cost you. So just leave one on. Auto switching. Now. Just don't put an automatic. Just leave on air balls on loose balls. What would happen is, let's say this is your player model, okay? If the ball is seven feet or so, I think it's six feet. Six feet, I think it's six feet or higher in the, in the air, the game will switch for you automatically. So that is the benefit of it. So if the ball goes over six, so when, the, when you're running around normally, the game won't switch. Because what people do is, and which is a very common practice, people, they use, your, they use their CDMs to defend. Now, if you have this on automatic, the game will realize, okay, the ball's over there. Let's say the ball's here in theory. The game will be like, oh, instead of using your CDM, I'm now going to force you to switch to your left back. But having this on manual or, or air balls or loose balls or any of this, it doesn't change for you automatically. So you only have to change when there's a, so you only have to change when you want to. Or if there's an air ball in behind, the game will switch to you. So if someone has an L1 triangle top over the top through ball, then the game will switch for you when the ball is sixth six feet or higher in that's the key thing to remember guys yeah so the game won't, the game won't switch for you perfect that way you can run back with your cdm run back with your center mid and again as a select your center back because a lot of people what they do is they don't realize this by the way but a lot of players that are new to fifa they have an automatic they think it's the right thing to do they're running this way with the cdm and then the game switches to their center back and they run out of the center back and they create a hole that's what i wanted to mention um this one like the best thing i can explain to you is when the game switches to you automatically there's like a period where the game controls the player and it puts them in. So let's say, for example, the, your, your opponent's running back and you switch to your defender and he's running back, okay? People with a left analog stick, they might be controlling another player, left analog stick facing the opposite way. So when you switch to this player, the game will, or if the game auto switches for you, the game will provide you some directional assistance for a short period of time. So that way, if you're, run, if you're running that way, if you, if you switch to your defender, at least he won't be running forward anymore. He'll be running backwards alongside your opponent. So that is why it's very important. So I would recommend low because you do because a lot of people don't realize, but they do make the mistake. Once you advance at the game and you really know the nuts, because this, for example, I leave on another. I explain to you the reasons why. If there's a through ball going in behind, right? And let's say my opponent. I'm gonna depict this guy in blue. Actually, maybe, maybe that can make it a bit easier. That's my opponent. Yeah. So that's 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 the ball coming in behind. And that's my opponent. Sometimes if I'm defending, I want to put myself in yellow here. If I'm defending, sometimes the game will move me in a certain direction. I don't want that. I want to be able to move myself manually. So I want no assistance whatsoever. But for most of you guys, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're like, no, what are you talking about? Just leave it on low. Don't put it on high is my best advice. Only if you're brand new to the game. If you've been playing the game for over a couple of months now, put it on low. 
been playing the game for years. Um, if you're happy with it, change to none. It's my best advice. Don't forget, it's only when the game switches to that player. This way, you orient yourself or the game assists you for a split second. It does help a lot of people. Classic or directional, it's up to you. Um, I, to be honest, I just use both. I Sometimes I use directional, but sometimes it's scooter motion into classic. I mean, to be honest, it's, it's, it's down to user preference, whatever you want. Um, I would say just put it directional, but unless you like you, you have a habit of like spamming in a certain direction, you don't want it to go there, then leave it on classic. Player lock, leave it on on, unless you press the L3 and R3 buttons in together by mistake. Icon switching. I mean, this is a bit too inconsistent, a bit too slow, I would say. You can leave it on if you want to. You press, you can, and you can use any of these. You just leave the icon switching, press the R3 button, and then it would say like, have a show, let's say you have four players on a pitch, right? And basically, it would say left, right, down, up. So you press the R3 button. If you have, if you press this button, if you then press the right analog stick down, and then you flick it up, you'll then switch to this player. If you press the right analog stick down and you switch to right hand side, you'll switch to this player. So it allows you to select what player you want to switch to, but in, in practice, it's just too slow. It just doesn't work in time. Um, right stick switching, um, there, it depends. Okay, player rotation, no one uses It's too slow. Don't use this, in my opinion. Um, you're better off just using ball rotor to a player rotor than leaving this on. Um, what I'd recommend is turn um, icon switching um, on. And that way, if you press the R, unless you have a habit of pressing the R3 button by mistake, when defending, you shouldn't be pressing the R3 button in anyway. Because you'd be defending with the left analog stick anyway. Um, what I'd recommend is ball relative is basically wherever the ball is. Imagine a clock, okay? That that's 12 o'clock, that's three o'clock. If I if I have this on ball relative, if I flick my left analog stick, for example, I'm sorry, my right analog stick towards nine o'clock, it will change the player that's on the left hand side of the ball. So wherever the ball is, and the reason why I leave it on player relative, I mean ball relative as opposed to player relative, should I say, is because the game is just more consistent. You know, but once you get used to the game, when the ball goes in a certain region, you know if you flick to the top left, you're going to always switch to your left back. With player relative, it depends on where the player is. So if you select in your CDM over here, and we do the same thing, we do the 12, and we do the 3, and we do the 9 o'clock, and you want to switch then to your, to your, for example, um, your left, your right back, you have to switch it down to so 7 o'clock. But then if you're controlling this player first and then suddenly you're controlling this player. Now, if you want to switch back to this guy over here, you then got to flick it the opposite way towards like 2 o'clock. So there's a lot of flicking left and right, left and right. And that's why a ball relative is just consistent. You just focus on the ball. Whereas player relative, you have to look at the red marker. So ball, general rule of thumb, ball relative is where you look at the ball and you draw a clock depending on where the ball is. That's where you flick your right hand mark stick. Player relative is where the player that you're already controlling, that cursor, then you flick it to whoever you want to switch to after. Same thing with the top of clock. So that's why I'd say it's a personal preference. I'd recommend ball relative. No one does this, but a lot of people have changed ball relative. I find it more consistent. I changed to it as soon as it came out, when it when it, when it did come out. Um, Grass is leave unassisted. Shot sister leave us all unassisted. Um, don't put this on manual. People try to cross and you can leave it on semi. Semi just says, um, the more power you do, you do a little bit of power, go near post, a lot of power, It'll go middle area, lots of power, maximum power go to far post. That's all semi does. Assisted base, the game just choose who you wants the ball to. So I would say use semi, unless you don't cross like myself, I don't cross the ball. I just do driven passes inside the box. No one leaves them assisted. Everything else is fine. Analog sprint. Um, think of the R2 button like a gas pedal in your car, okay, guys? So with a gas pedal, it's between, imagine like zero to 100%, okay? So if you put your gas pedal in 50%, I'm not going to actually do it because it'll change the menu. But if I push it on like only 50%, right, for example, you'll only run at 50% of the speed. So if you're if you're running this way, let's say you're running towards the right-hand side, but you only hold the R2 or the run bus in 50%, you're only going to be running at 50% of the speed. Now, people don't realize this, but they don't actually hold the R2 button all the way down. So a lot of people are like, why is my jockey slow? It's because they're not holding the R2 button completely. So I'd recommend leaving this on off. On a very, very high level, you can leave the analog sprint on and you can dictate how to, like your left analog stick, you can hold the run button and left analog stick to control the speed of left stick dribbling. I don't do that. I think even some of the top tier players, there's a, maybe a handful of players actually use that. 
to be honest, unless unless you're a top tier pro player, I'm, I'm talking about even the, even the, some of the best don't even use this. There's no point. If you is this is this too much to lose when you're defending if you don't press the R2 button in down enough. But that's only if you're using the triggers. If you're using the R1 or, or you're running with triangle, those that played back in the day ISS, the old ISS, the original one, triangle was your dash button, so you can't use that. If you press triangle with your run button. For those that played ISS back in the day, you would know. Pass receiver lock earlier. Late late just means that if you make a pass and someone cuts the passing lane, you can then change the pass direction as long as the ball hasn't been hit. So let's say, for example, players A is here and I want to pass the player A. But let's say your opponent comes in and he blocks that out. I can then pass the player B as long as my ball doesn't touch the foot. If it's on early, if I make a pass to player A, that's it. It's locked in. I can't cancel it. And if some, my opponent comes to man market, that's it. I'm stuck. So I recommend leaving this on late. Uh, leave this on off, leave this on off. You don't want to turn this. Basically, the game just makes it harder to press. It's like, imagine like pulling a trigger, for example, on a weapon. Do you really want that? No, you don't. It's just, it hurts your hands. It's not even worth having. Now, controls. I leave this on basic. What I would recommend, um, the only thing I would say defensively is um, you should not be using this button at all. This button should be removed from FIFA, in my opinion. Contain, you should not be using this at all. What I recommend is teammate contain is very important, but a lot of people don't use it. Teammate contain by default is the R1 button. What I will do is I'll switch these two around. The reason why is, is because when you're defending, it's very awkward, like especially if you use your, your index fingers, it's very awkward to use teammate contain with the R1 button because some people use run and jockey, then they can't. So you can only do this if you use two fingers on each side. Do you see that? A lot of players don't realize, but they, even myself, I'll be honest, I should change like this, but I've been playing like this for years. And sometimes if I need to use all four, I go like this, I bring them up. It's not really good for reactions, but I'll explain to you why I do that in a second. But basically, long story short is, you want to use teammate contain with the X button, not with the R1 button, because the X button is not being used. That is what I would recommend. So just switch those two around. Everything else is fine. There's no point changing your controls. However, these are my controls, okay? Now I need to explain this to you guys. I've been playing PES and ISS for years, okay? I've tried changing, I just can't. I've just, I've been playing for 20 years the same way. My tackle button is X. Now there's benefits to this. If the tackle button is X, for example, you know sometimes when you make a tackle, if, you're, if your tackle button is circle, sometimes the game makes a tackle and that's it. But there's like some sort of glitch inside the game. If, for example, the ball's in the middle and your opponent's got the ball and you press the tackle button, you can actually pass the ball with your first touch instead of taking a touch and then passing it because the game registers the defensive and the short pass as the same button. So it's kind of like a trick. That's why I've always left my... That's why I never change my tackle button. And the reason why I do it is... It's because the right analogs, the player switch button, is closer to the X button. So it's easy for me to tackle and let go of the or let go of the player switch button rather than going all the way across. It saves you 0 0.5 seconds. Maybe even less. Who knows? Do you have to change it? No. Okay. That's the reason why I do that. My sprint button is R1. Again, I've just muscle memory. I get wrist pain as well, really bad wrist pain. And I don't like holding the control like this. It hurts my wrist. I get really bad pain over here. Serious, seriously bad pain. So I don't do that. I just use it like this and I rest it. Personal preference. I tried changing. It's just too much pain for me. So I'm not going to change. Defensively now. Uh, sorry, attacking. Hang on. That is defense attacking. Now, my run button is R1. I said I explained that already. Everything else is the same. It's only my shoot button is square. Again, it's the same thing. The square is close to the right analog stick when you want to press the shoot button, but also the fake shot. Doing a fake shot this way is natural because your thumb naturally rests like this. Do you see that? But if you have to, but to do a fake shot with circle and X, or if you're on Xbox, it should be, I don't know, A and A and B, I believe. A and B, yeah. It's very hard. Like you have to go like this. You see that? But with square next, you can do like a worm type motion like this. Like that. And it's very easy to do fake shots with that. Um, I made a video ages ago on my FIFA school series. Um, I would recommend if you're part of it. I released it. I uploaded it last year, should I say. But it's a very, very important video. I'm going to see if I can find this over here. Let me see if I can find this off screen. So I'll, I'll just show you. 
Um, see, let's see if, if I can find it. Bear with me one second, guys, while I just... Um, I just search for it. One second. It's called the fake shot. Hang on. Fake shot of the efficient method. Okay, so you will see this when you come up. If you are part of my Patreon series, you will see this. I'm just going to do this in full screen so you can see. So let's have a quick look. This is a quick sneak peek of my FIFA school videos. This is what you can um, hope to see the kind of videos that I do. Um, I'm trying to find it, but one second. Bear with me. My computer has decided to freeze now. I'm um, a bit unfortunate. There we go. Here it is. So I'm going to show you here very, very quickly. Um, so you can see this from last year, but I, I'm going to move this as well from the screen. It's from last year's video, but look, don't forget the controls don't change. Okay. Um, so what it is, I'm explaining that there's two ways of doing a fake shot. You can do it either with square and X or circle and X. Up to you which way you want to do it. It doesn't make a difference, but it's much inherently much more difficult to do this than it is to do this. Okay. So that's what I leave my square button on shoot. So you see, for example, how I do it is like a worm type motion. So I'm basically pressing the tip of my thumb and then I'm so that way, because people when they do the fake shot, they take too long. They go from X to circle. By the time they do this, the game thinks you want to make a pass and then a cross. So this worm motion is like instant. You know, you just press like that bam, like that one second, very instant. And that's why it's very, very easy to do. So that's what I'd recommend. So if you are looking to potentially do that i would recommend doing it with the worm motion um but if you're used to um as i said um doing this for many many years then just leave it as it is and that is my controls and that is what i advise you everything else is, is like our default a couple of things that i do plus from what i said here i leave that on none everything else is completely the same but those are the customized or well, custom controller settings hope you enjoyed don't forget the video support my patreon series patreon.com Four slash nil guys. If you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money. That is, of course, the nil guys guarantee link is down below in the description and in the pinned comment section down below. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take it easy. And of course, I'll catch you next time. Peace out. Boys.